Are you a first time home buyer thinking about purchasing a home in today's market? I'm sure besides the fear and anxiety, you probably have a ton of questions that you're wondering, is this the right time to buy? And one of the problems that's out there is that there's so much information and a lot of bad information at the same time. So how do you, as a first time home buyer, disseminate all that information to figure out, is this the right time to buy for your personal financial situation? Guidelines change all the time as far as what lenders look at, what's allowable, what's not allowable, and the media is constantly putting out information that a lot of times it's outdated. So are you making the right decision based on accurate information or are you looking at inaccurate information and maybe making a bad choice to buy a house? So in this video, I wanted to give you five tips that I look at as a mortgage lender to help our clients purchase their first home. Tip number one, how long do you plan on living in the home? Are you ready to settle down? That's a serious question I think you need to ask yourself because what I've been seeing a lot lately is a lot of you are relocating from all over the country, whether it be for personal reasons or work-related reasons. Uh, being able to move, obviously that's a great flexibility and that's a huge plus, which I think is amazing that you can take advantage of that. But how long are you going to be in that new state? Is it just for a year, two years? Whatever that time frame is, I think that's one thing you seriously need to consider because the one thing that's at the top of everyone's mind when it comes to the real estate market is how hot it's been. It's been on fire for literally the last several years. Now, everyone's always wondering, when is it going to come to an end? Is it going to come to an end? And how will it all happen? And what's going to be the trigger that actually causes, you know, the slowdown or a potential decrease in home prices? So back to my point of knowing how long are you going to be in this new city? And like I said, are you ready to settle down? Because if you're purchasing a home and in my opinion, if you're going to be there for several years and I'm talking at least five or more years, I would definitely look to purchase because I would imagine at anywhere in the country, rents are going up. I've talked to some friends that are in Miami, Florida, that their rents are going up by the thousands. And one of my buddies, Zach, who lives in Miami, his rent's actually going up over $5,000 a month. And now he's thinking about buying because he doesn't want to keep throwing his money away to his landlord when he can probably purchase a, a condo that's literally going to be cheaper than what his mortgage payment's going to be. On the flip side, if you're moving to a city and you are totally unsure of whether or not you're going to like it, whether or not you even want to stay there, or whether or not you want to put roots down, I think I would probably hold off on buying. Let's say you buy the house, your job transfers you to another part of the country, and now you have to sell because you don't want to be a landlord. Now, the thing that can bite you in the butt is, let's just say, what if the market slows down? Or what if values start to plateau or even decrease? So you could have purchased a home for 400,000. And if you didn't put, you know, a large chunk of money down on that house, you could be, you know, almost at even if you sell, because remember there's fees that you have to pay to both the buyer's agent, the selling agent that lists your home and potentially any closing costs that the buyer could ask for. So depending on the price of the home, you could be looking at tens of thousands of dollars that you could easily have to pay when you sell your property. So depending on what your timeline is looking like, I think that's the first thing you really need to consider. Are you going to be staying in that city for a long enough time to where the investment's going to make sense? And number two, my second tip, the crash is not coming. This is a question that so many of you have asked. And, and I think a lot of you actually have held off on buying your home over the last several years because everyone would always come out and say there's going to be a crash this year or the market has to slow down but i think a lot of you have thought that or even have said that for the last several years i know i've talked to a number of clients over these last few years that you know they they felt that the market was going to slow down they felt that the prices were were overpriced in their market but year after year after year especially these last several years you're seeing double digit appreciation almost everywhere across the country, which is huge. So if you would have bought a house two or three years ago, four years ago, five years ago, how much equity would you have to your name right now? And I think that's one thing a lot of you missed out on was trying to anticipate the market too much. So I think it's safe to say at this point, the market is not going to crash. And if you think that the 2008 crash is gonna happen all over again, 
I strongly urge you to do your homework. Look at what was the catalyst as to what drove the crash back in 2008. You have to remember, we are in two completely different markets. 2008, subprime was the name of the game. If you had a heartbeat, you had a social, you could get a mortgage. Today, totally not the case. You have to prove yourself to every lender, regardless of how much money you make, regardless of what your credit score is, you have to document and we as lenders have to verify all your information. So that's one thing that to me alleviates this huge crash that could potentially happen because everyone has to qualify today. And remember back in 2008, there was a whole slew of bank properties that ended up going to the market. Banks foreclosed on people. And next thing you know, there was a ton of inventory on the marketplace and that's just basic supply and demand. A ton of supply, mediocre demand, prices drop. But translate that to today's market, there is very little inventory on the marketplace and demand is at an all time high. And also remember the interest rates back in 2008 were a lot higher than what they are today. Even though some of you might think 4% is a high rate, if you actually go back and you check out Fannie Mae's records of the last 50 years of what interest rates were, 4% still an amazingly low interest rate. And we actually got spoiled the last few years when we've seen rates in the twos and even the low twos. I've been doing this for 15 years and I've never seen rates that low. So to me, that was free money. And if you didn't buy or refinance during that time, I mean, shoot, I don't know what else could have gotten you off the fence in order to buy a house. Oh, and by the way, my name is Sean Uihara. And if we haven't met before, and this is the first time that you're checking out my channel, I'm a branch manager with Loan Depot and I help homeowners purchase their first properties. Or if you're an investor looking to build your real estate portfolio, we've got you covered all across America. Now you can hit the description below. There's links to more information to learn how to get your mortgage right. And don't forget, we drop content every single week. So if you like these videos, make sure to hit that subscribe button and hit the bell so we know that you love what we're putting out because my team and I would really appreciate that. And by the way, I want to give a special shout out to Mr. Chin. He is one of our recent clients that started with us here on YouTube. So Mr. Chin, we appreciate you watching and subscribing to our channel. Actually closed on his home here in Las Vegas. So I wanted to say thank you so much for commenting and thanks so much for being a subscriber because we truly appreciate everything that you did. And it was a pleasure working with you to get you into your new home. Now back to the video and point number three. The thing you should also think about is how much is your rent going to increase? I don't think it's a matter of if it's going to increase. I think it's safe to say that rents are going to increase this year. So if your lease is going to expire, I think I would have that conversation with your landlord or try to figure out what that new budget's going to be. Because I think for a lot of you that are looking to buy and you're currently renting, if you do have a monthly budget, I believe for most people, your rent payment and your car payment is probably at the top of the list. And then everything else kind of follows suit. So if your rent's gonna go up 500 bucks or in a thousand bucks, that's a huge jump for most people, especially if you're living in a place by yourself and you have no other help. It's not like your job's gonna pay you an extra $2,000 or $3,000 just because your rent's going up. And I think the other thing that makes it tough is inflation. That's the talk of the town lately. Everything's getting more expensive. So if your rent's gonna go up, and it's not like we, what we've seen in the past of maybe a 5% bump, you're seeing massive, massive jumps of you know, 20% increases. I mean, it's just insane. And honestly, it worries me for some of these renters because if you can't afford to pay the new rent, what are you gonna do? It's not like there's a ton of rentals that's available out there as well. The rental market is just as bad as if you're looking to buy. So I think that's also another serious thing to consider is that if your rent's gonna jump up, I think you have to really start thinking about, is there a way that you can purchase a home? Are there down payment assistance programs in your area that can help you get into a house with little to no money down? In most parts of the country, there's always some sort of community program that can help you get into your property. So make sure you talk with a lender who understands how to utilize those programs so that way they can help you get into your house. Now, of course, if you got some money saved up, more power to you, good job on saving money and, and having a nest egg. That is great. But remember, FHA only requires three and a half percent down, or you can look at a conventional loan of three to five percent down. Throw that 20% myth out the window. You don't need 20% to buy a house. 
Remember, you can also get a gift from a family member or even your employer can give you a gift in order to buy a house with a down payment. So there's a lot of ways that you can get into a home. You just gotta be a little resourceful. And again, like I always talk about, make sure you talk with a lender who knows all these options that can guide you into your property. So you may need to start planning maybe six months or a year in advance in case you need to work on your credit or do anything else to get you in a position so that you can purchase your home. Tip number four, do not be house poor. That may sound obvious, but you have to think about what's going on in the marketplace right now. If you're working with a loan officer, they may pre-qualify you and give you the max number of what you can qualify and purchase. And let's say that number is $500,000. You may not want to spend $500,000. Now you have to really think about what are you comfortable paying every single month and how much buying power does that get you? Is that going to get you into a home that you're going to be comfortable with? Now you definitely might not be able to buy your dream home the first go around, which is totally fine. Remember, you just want to get in the door so that way you can start building some equity and some wealth through real estate. Now, let's just say you bought a house five years ago, you made a couple hundred thousand bucks and you sold today. Maybe now you're buying your dream home. So don't get discouraged if you can't purchase that dream home today. There's so much more opportunities that will come down the road that maybe you can buy that house in several years. So make sure you get in the door. But remember, don't be house poor because the last thing you'd want to do is slave yourself working endlessly and tirelessly just to make your mortgage payment. Whenever we work with first time home buyers, I always like to know what they are comfortable paying. I don't really care about how much the maximum is because I honestly don't even want to get them to their maximum. I like to be, if you remember, you got the devil on your shoulder and the angel on the other side. I like to be the angel because it's so easy as a buyer to get emotionally wrapped up into the deal. You go out and you're starting to look at homes. You start envisioning you coming home. If you have a family, you know, your kids picking out their bedrooms. So everyone gets emotionally involved into the transaction. Now as a good loan officer, we have to sometimes reel you back in into reality and say, hey, look, Joe, I know you want to go up to $500,000, but remember, you told me you're comfortable paying only $2,300 a month. If we go up to the $500,000 amount, you might be paying closer to $3,000 a month in your mortgage payment. So I think those are important things to think about because remember, you're going to have unexpected expenses. Being a homeowner, you, may, you now have to maintain your property. You're gonna to wanna to make upgrades to the home. There's gonna be maintenance and all these other things that come along with being a homeowner that maybe you're not thinking about right now. So make sure that you know the difference and have a budget of what your maximum amount that you can purchase a home is and also what you're comfortable paying as well because those are typically two completely different things. And the market that we're in right now, it's very, very easy to get caught up and chase the next deal. You know, the house that you love comes on the market and now your realtor is telling you, you need to pay $10,000, $20,000 over the asking price in order to get the house. Now, does that get keep you in line with what you're comfortable paying? Or now are you chasing this deal because you're so emotionally wrapped up into it versus sticking to your guns? So that's where I think you have to have a plan and make sure you talk about that plan with your loan officer so you guys are on the same page. And tip number five, know what you're getting into when you decide to buy in this market. It's a very competitive market. There's a lot of you that will go out and look at homes. You might get discouraged because maybe you had three to five, maybe even 10 offers get rejected. And then you say, you know what? This isn't the time to buy. This isn't right for me. And you give up. I can tell you there were so many clients that I've talked to within the last couple of years that made that mistake. They gave up on buying. They signed another year lease. Now guess what? The prices went up, interest rates have gone up, which means your payments are going up and you're buying less house. Unless you have a lot of disposable income or you have a ton of money to put down where you can offset the increases. But for most of you, that hurts because you might have lost tens of thousands of dollars in buying power because of waiting. Or maybe you made the mistake like some of our clients where we've actually talked about in this channel where they go out and buy cars and stuff like that that literally cost them hundreds of thousands of dollars in buying power. 
So if you're looking to buy, I think you have to mentally know that this is a tough market right now, but it's not to say that it's impossible or you can't get a house. I think you just have to know that, hey, it might take a little longer to buy, but that's okay. Because once you do find the house, I can reassure you that you're probably gonna be extremely happy with the property. This always reminds me about the time that I bought my first home. It was a very competitive market back then. And I remember going out every single week and I'd go and look at a house. And every time I walk through the front door, I'd say, this is it. I love this house. I can't wait to get it accepted. We'd write the offer and guess what? The offer would get rejected. And even me being in the business at the time, I still couldn't get anything done. So week after week, the same thing happens over and over and over again. But the thing I wanna share with you is that every week I felt the same way. This was the one. This house is gonna be the one that's gonna get accepted. But the house that I eventually bought and I still own to this day, I can truly say once I did get into contract on the home, I was really happy with it because the one thing that none of the other houses didn't have that I looked at was a pool. So I lucked out, it was a great purchase. I always share that with you because I want you to remember that sometimes the process can be a little more difficult. So just because your friend, coworker, family member went through the process and maybe they got lucky, maybe that first house that they wrote an offer on, they actually got accepted and they went into contract. Great for them, but you have to remember there's so many moving parts to the process. You have your offer, you have your real estate agent that's representing you, and you have the seller and their agent. So you have literally four people that has to have somewhat a meeting of the minds in order for your offer to get accepted. You know, sometimes the agents don't like each other and they don't even want to deal with that person on the other side. Sounds petty, but it happens. Or maybe the seller doesn't like your terms because you want to move in quickly and they need a little more time because they, they're looking to buy another property and it's not ready yet. So there's so many moving parts. And that's why I always share with you that having a good real estate agent is really important because a good realtor is going to uncover all of those items that I just talked about. And it's going to help negotiate for you to get your offer accepted. And that's why like I always say the highest offer is not always the best offer. You have to look at the terms of the contract as well, but just know that there are ways to get into properties. And if you are deciding to buy this year, don't give up because I can tell you like anything else in life, anything that's worthwhile takes a little time. It takes a little work, takes a little effort, but once it happens, it feels good. And you know that you accomplished something huge. Those are my five tips to help all of you first time home buyers think about, is this the right time to buy or should I wait? Maybe I'm not ready. Or you know what? Maybe you've got some questions and you actually need to talk to a loan officer. So don't forget, you can always send me a text. My information is below in the description. And here's a playlist to help you learn how to get your mortgage right. I'll see you on the next video.